Hey everyone, Joe Malfi here with Master Life by Design and you have my queen, my beautiful lady uh, with the Awaken Life Movement. You can check it out at awakenlifemovement.com. We just got back from spending some quality time with her brother and one of our friends here in the Bay Area. And her friend was so sweet because she got her all these beautiful flowers. Three dozen <clears throat> roses. Absolutely awesome and abundant, but we wanted to give you two tips from each of us on how to have a, have a fulfilling relationship. And so we're in a society today where over 50% uh, of relationships or marriages end in divorce, which is a very sad statistic. And out of those marriages, that 50% those, that, that ends in divorce, actually, I think it's up to 80% are due to financial reasons. But we want to help give you a couple tips that even if the financial challenges do arise, how can you still have that passionate, fulfilling relationship with your partner? And we we have that too. So we want to share what works for us. And if it works for you, awesome. So take these tips. So the first tip, I'll start off. Is that okay? Yeah. So the first one is that I have is fall in love with your partner just like you did on day one. See, can you remember why you fell in love with your partner the first day? Like, what what was it about them? What was it like? Was she absolutely stunning and beautiful? <laughs> or did you just get so attached to how intellectually, um, you know, or how intelligent they were, should I say? Right? Or how intellectual they are. Right? What is it that, why did you fall in love in the first place? And if you can remember that every single day, I have an alarm on my phone that goes off at 7.15 that says, remember all the reasons why you love Christina. And I go back to thinking about when we first met and why I was so passionate about having, you know, falling for her and why I desired to be with her in the first place. And those moments really rekindled the fire because though that moment, that emotional moment still lives in me today. So that's the first tip. Fall in love with your your partner again all over. Every day fall in love with your partner. So that's my first tip. What's your first one? <clears throat> I'm gonna add to what he's what he just shared. And for me it would be like doing the things you did for your partner in the beginning of the relationship. So physical touch is really big for us, right? And he loves it. Sometimes like before bed, I'm just always rubbing him and massaging him. Sometimes I don't feel like it and I consciously decide to do it because that's one of the things that he fell in love with. And so I don't want to stop doing that because I'm busy or because I'm tired because I love me his needs so right okay that so wasn't what, my number two okay so yeah, what's your my, first tip so my first tip is check your ego at the door and when we hit our speed bumps the ego flares up and I so badly at times want to be right and <clears throat> some people say you can either be right or you can be in love and so I really practice myself on letting things go so I'm a fire sign I get triggered really easily and my emotions just flare up and so I work on my mindset to reframe whatever is going on into an empowering meaning and we're really quick to say I'm sorry and let go. Yeah, I'll tell you, Christina's really good at that. She's usually the first one, so I'm going to give credit where it's <laughs> due on that is she's really good because I can get stubborn. You know, let's look at this. Men don't like to be wrong. Masculine energy want to believe that they are always right. And for her to come and bring that feminine energy into the picture and say, oh my goodness, like, I'm so sorry, it's powerful. And it allows me to kind of let my guard down, allows the warrior within me when we have our speed bumps to kind of put my sword down, drop the armor, and just come back to her. Um, Leah says you guys are wearing <laughs> matching clothes. She always does this. She always I, wants us no, to match. I do. I <clears> like <throat> matching. It's so funny. Because when I'm wearing one color and then he's wearing the complete opposite, it just it feels like we're not a team. It just throws it off. It's awkward, I yeah. think. Absolutely. So 
I had a second one, but it escaped me, so I'm going to let Christina go with her second one. Okay, guys, girls, this one, it might be a little funny, but I've learned that, not that I've learned, I don't say no to him <coughs> when he wants it. If I'm tired... What do you mean by that? It doesn't matter. He's my king and I'm here to please him and vice versa. So I feel like it takes more time and effort. Sorry, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just going to keep my hands to myself. Um, so I feel like it takes more time and effort to be like, no, I'm too tired. And then the energy is just off. And you don't want your man to feel like he can't come to you when he desires you. And so that's a big tip for me. So... Yeah. And vice versa, man. Like, if your lady wants to be intimate with you, do it. Even if you're not in the mood. And going back to her point, ladies, this is huge. And I'm coming from a masculine space to let you know and to give you some clues on this. If you reject your man when he desires you, just think. Your, your queen, as a man, your queen is the one person you can come to where all your armor is dropped. Where you come where you feel like she's the source of love. And if that source of love is constantly rejecting you in your most vulnerable moments, you're starting to condition your partner that she doesn't love you. At least not that way. And what man really wants to have a partner that doesn't love them intimately? I always used to say, look, a friendship without intimacy or, yeah, a relationship without intimacy is a friendship. Really, think about it. That's all it is. So women don't reject your man and men don't reject your woman. Because also, if for some reason she's insecure, she's going to say, where else are you getting it? And that's a whole another topic, right? <clears throat> um, but she has needs too, just like you have needs. So women, make sure that you're pleasing your man. And men, please make sure you're taking care of your woman. And look, it's not, let's be honest. As you get older and the more time you've been in a relationship, things kind of get the, you know, common, right? Mm -hmm. And so you got to spice it up. You got to have some fun. And we're not going to give you all of our secrets tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll be from when we have seminars and stuff like that or um, online seminars. So we'll uh, we'll give you all the juicy details on what really works for us. Um, but we have room for improvement also. So what's my second tip? I, I had it and it slipped, but out of... What? She has... Love languages are, are good, um, <clears throat> but I had something really good, and if I can just have a minute, read Suzanne's uh, comment. So, what if they haven't stepped up for marriage? Like, meaning, are you saving yourself for marriage? Is that what you're referring to? We'll let her answer that. Yeah, well, let's not wait, so we can just kind of give an answer to that. Go ahead. Um, I was trying to think of my second um, tip. If I was... I'm not in that position. <laughs> so if it were me, there's other ways that you can have a sense of passion without actually having sex. And so I'll just go with this for myself because this is one thing I wanted to share. We'll give you a bonus from me. So really truing, truly knowing your partner's love languages. And you can literally go on to the five lovelanguages.com to take the test and if you know your partner's love languages, you can fulfill them in that way. So if there's someone who likes words of affirmations, he's really big on that. And so one of the things that I do is write him little love notes, places, send him sweet text messages, just really affirming. Sometimes we'll sit on the couch and I'll look him in the eyes and tell him the reasons I love him. And <coughs> anything you want to add to that? Um, what if they haven't stepped up for marriage? Oh, if your partner hasn't stepped up to ask you to marry them, uh, if that's what you're asking, Susanna, I hope that is because that's how I'm going to answer it. So <laughs> if your partner hasn't stepped up for marriage, one is I would personally, Christina has this great belief in it, it's closed mouths don't get fed. And I agree with that. And I think I've always believed in that, you know, I, this might be real or raw for a lot of you, but we're being honest and authentic. You know, if you're in a, 
intimate relationship with someone and they're doing something that's not pleasurable, I always had the belief, tell them so that they can do what's pleasurable. Don't allow them to think that they're pleasing you and they're not and then you're building up this kind of resentment towards them. And plus, who wants to be intimate with someone when it doesn't feel good, right? The point of intimacy is to have this great euphoric experience that God has created. And so if they haven't, I would open up your mouth and say, you know, bring up the conversation. Like, you know, uh, you know, women are really good at dropping hints. <laughs> um, does that work? Is that good? Does this help? So women are good, great at dropping hints, but I would have that conversation straight up with them and say, you know, yeah, I, marriage is something that's on my heart. Is it for you? And have that conversation from a place of just curiosity and love, not in a demanding way. And then see how they respond. But look, if, if your outcome in a relationship is not to get married and spend forever, then why are you even in a relationship? Get out. Go find your partner if that's your goal. But hey, if your goal is just to have fun and mess around, then okay, great. <clears throat> so I hope that answers your question. My second tip, here's what makes me successful in our relationship, but also in my friendships, in my business relationships. And that is men and women, the small things matter. The small things matter most. That's what escaped me is that... I do the little things. If she's sitting at the computer and I walk in the room just to see what she's up to, I start massaging her shoulders and giving her a massage because I know she loves that. If she's waking up slowly in bed and I'm already up in front, uh, I'm already up, I'll go ahead and I'll gently rub her legs softly just to make her feel like just so special and loved. Hey, right? it's doing those little things. If she, look, we have, we kind of have rules for each other, at least, um, I don't want to say rules. What do we think? Um, we kind of have duties and around the house, right? <laughs> <clears throat> she doesn't like laundry and I don't like cooking or doing the dishes. So we said, Hey, I'll do the laundry. You do the dishes and cook. And she meal preps only twice a week. So it's only two times a week. Um, but when we eat our meal prep and she has, she runs off out somewhere, Instead of letting the dishes always pile up, sometimes I do the dishes for her just to help her. And he always puts away the dishes. I always put away. Thanks, babe. That's good stuff. Thanks. Give me a little credit. <laughs> so it's about doing the little things that your partner wants you to do or needs to. Go ahead. So he always like <clears throat> refills my water bottles or like we have this thing where if one of us is like brushing our teeth before the other, we'll put like toothpaste on the other person's toothbrush. Like <coughs> just little things like that. It just makes such a difference. Cause it's like, Oh, they thought about me. Yeah. She feels special. Exactly. And even if she's gone all day or something like that, you know, we'll text each other like, Hey, just thinking of you. I love you. I hope you're safe. You know, be safe. Things like that, just a little extra added bonus. And we're doing small, cute little things like leaving notes or posting how much you love each other on Facebook. And some people don't agree with that. And, you know, I shouldn't have to publicly, um, you know, expose my relate my love for you on social media. And look, to each their own. I, I love to do it. I love to honor my girl in different ways. What's funny about the reason why I do it is I actually do it to test her to see how <laughs> long it takes her to go on Facebook and really notice that I made a post about her. It's funny. She'll go all day without noticing and I'm just I'm like not waiting. I'm big on Facebook. <laughs> it's, she's an Instagram girl. And but... he has to tell me, hey, check your Facebook. And I'm like, oh, okay. I'm a little... I'm you know, look, I'm a little impatient, right? I, you know, she's like, you gotta have more patience, but I'm like, look, I'm not a doctor. So, um, it's been 12 hours checking. Yeah. <laughs> so I get a little impatient around that, but those are a couple of tips that we, each of us gave you those two tips. So the first one that I had was to, uh, well, is to fall in love with your partner every day. Remember what it was like when you first met and why you fell in love with them. Fall in love with them. Make it part of your morning ritual. And as you stack that day in and day out, life becomes magical with your partner. And then the second one that I gave you was doing the small things. The th small things are what matter, not just in your intimate relationship, but in all your relationships in life. 
What were your two? And then we'll answer Gina's question. <clears throat> Check your ego. Leave it at the door. Let go. Release that negative entity sooner rather than later. And the last one is just be <coughs> there for your partner intimately when they want it. Give it to them. Like, that's your man. That's your woman. Cool. Step up. <laughs> Thanks, Kendall. Appreciate it. And Gina said, how can you get intimacy back if it has faded from uh, from the heat you had in the beginning? Look, in the, to be honest, all... I have a question. I would say it... Sorry, babe. I would say it would depend is the lack from <coughs> the woman or from the man. Because if as a woman, you're not feeling intimate and passionate, a lot of times what happens is your partner's just not being present with you and feeling you. Women want to be felt. They want to be heard. And we don't just like snap into a mood like just instantaneously. And so as a man, if a woman has lost the attraction, I would say, what can you do for the next 30 days to meet her needs authentically? Speak her love language. Yeah. And you know, men, I had to learn her and look, every woman's different. Every guy's different, period. Right. And I had to learn what turned her on, warmed her up, whatever you want to call it. I had to learn those triggers, you know, and there's moments where, you know, you got to warm up your partner and there's times <laughs> where you just go at it. Right. And so it varies, but going back to how you can, uh, if the intimacy, how to get, get intimacy back and it's faded from the beginning look anything great in the beginning you're excited about right there's passion you're always you can't wait to see them and eventually you know things start that heat starts to fade and things start to shift and that's where I when I work with clients and you know Gina we haven't talked about this but when that intimacy starts to fade I think you need to take personal responsibility on how you show up and condition yourself like look if you don't feel excited about going to the gym you have to get your ass excited you have to get yourself pumped up otherwise it's gonna be a shitty workout if you don't feel like ha being on fire for your partner and intimacy you need to get yourself in that space and figure out what are those triggers and here's what I find that is most common is people do the same damn thing over and over and over, right? The same positions. It's yeah, it's repetitive. It's like you know, if you, you know, if you do dirty talk, dirty talk, you're like saying the same things over and over, right? Get, get spice to it. Have fucking fun. You know, like one time we, <clears throat> one of our friends, like jokingly gave us a Karma Sutra book, and we would have it open, and we would like flip the page and then switch positions and then flip the page. And it's just having fun. It's like, try something different. You know, it's like, you know, how many people get bored going to work, coming home, watching, cooking dinner, watching TV, and then get ready for the bed. And you do that five days a week. Like, doesn't life get boring? Same thing in your intimate relationship. So if you're lacking, you, you're going to have to condition yourself to find out what is, what turns you on about your partner? Really, what really turns you on about your partner? When's the last time you explored every inch of their body? Right, because ultimately a relationship is a place where you come to give. And so are you giving all of you to them? Are you giving all yourself to explore their body, to make them feel like they are a goddess or a god? Right, so that would be my, my tip to you. And one last thing, like what are you focused on? If you're a girl, are you focused on he's such <clears throat> a fucking he's such an asshole? Like or you can say that you can say asshole but not fucking. Okay. <laughs> anyway, Sorry. so where focus goes, energy flows. So if you're focusing on everything that you despise about your partner, that you don't like, that they're triggering you and they're irritating, you're not going to be turned on. So intentionally focus on everything you love about your partner. Before I wake up every morning and get out of bed, I thank God for the day and I sit and I pray for this man for at least a minute. And in my head, I just speak to God about everything that I am grateful for about him. And I remind myself of everything that I love about him. Andrew uh, just posted some, we'll read it here in a second. And you know, one of the things that 
I like to keep personal, but I'll, I'll share it with you is, you know, every morning I wake up and I say, you know, thank you for my health, thank you for my wealth, thank you for my wife, thank you for my life, and then thank you for your word and always being right. And that's, you know, my prayer to God, um, along with a more deeper prayer, but that's kind of my like little thing. But then if she's still sleeping, one of the things that I do is she may pray over me, but in my own mind, I go through and I say, um, I love you. Thank you for being in my life. I love you. Thank you for being in my life. I love you. Thank you for being in my life. And after September 30th, it'll be I love you. Thank you for being in my life. Thank you for being my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's where that's one of the things that I do when she's still sleeping or something like that. So um, Andrew's a good buddy of mine from when I was little. We used to hang out all the time, but he says, you guys have such a good energy and glow together. God bless you and your relationship. Your willingness to help others is so selfless and inspiring. Keep it up. Your children, when that time comes, will be so fortunate. I think your ability to listen and respect each other's views and feelings, and there's no alpha in the relationship is what makes it so strong and powerful. Well, Andrew, thanks, brother. I really appreciate that. Look, we're wrapping up here. There's going to be more tips we'll give out, but here's the one last thing that I will say is know why you're in your relationship. Like, what is the vision you have for you and your, your partner? We are a team. Team Moffat, right? She came up with that, actually, and I <laughs> love that shit. Right? And that's just a way to honor me and be a team. So find out what your vision is, how you can honor your partner, and do that each day. The key thing I'll say is consistency. Be consistent with it, and you'll start to see that things will start to shift with you and your partner. So anything else you want to say before we go? Nope. All you guys right. are awesome. All right. Awesome. Well, we're going to get back to family. We love you all. If you have questions, post below. Uh, you can go to masterlifebydesign.com or you can email me at joe at masterlifebydesign.com. You can reach Christina at awakenedlifemovement.com and you can email info at awakenedlifemovement.com. So if, you have, if you're just tuning in, we're cutting out here. So uh, go back, watch the beginning of this video. Hopefully it helps. Take some tips and tricks with you. And go spice up your relationship. Go have fun. And Justin says hi. What's going on, Justin? How are you? We'll have to connect on another video. But you guys have a great evening. The day's not over. So you can have some fun with your partner. It's not over. So make today count. We love you. God bless. You are amazing. Go out there and live life and have an unbelievable time because you're a winner from day one. Love you all. Joe Moffat, Master Life by Design. Bye. See ya.